Welcome to How to Make a Library Documentary. My name is Jeff Stern. I spent about 15 to 20 years as a filmmaker um, in film and television. I've written and directed my own work, but mainly I was a production manager. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you about the first stage of making a documentary. Um, when you start off making a documentary, you got to have an idea and you got to pitch that idea. In the industry, I've seen numerous different types of pitching. I've seen people come up with one paragraph of their idea. I've seen mainly it's what we call a one page where you basically come up with an eight and a half, eight and eleven and a half sort of write-up with an intro, body, and conclusion of your idea for a documentary and how it's going to work. And then I've also seen people come up with a whole script. This will be my first shot, this will be my second shot, and this is my conclusion, and it plays out more like a script form. There seems to be no real sort of one way of doing it. It depends on your idea and how you're going to execute that idea. In development, there's another thing that you have to worry about is access. How are you going to access who or where or what is in your documentary? And this is what we ha come up with rights. Um, Everybody kind of needs their own sort of legal uh, release form. There's individual release forms. Then there's uh, property location release forms. And then there's also documents, photographs, uh, letters, anything that's a, a document that you want to capture. That, who owns that? Who has the right to that? We kind of find a make sure that all our ducks are in line along with our proposal because I've seen it in my life working in documentary people come up with the greatest ideas but they don't have access and just to let you know how dicey that can get is I worked for an organization that came out with a memo the legal department sort of explaining the difficulties of getting access and rights and how it can catch you there was a, a very prominent newspaper that took a photograph of a mother and daughter at the Santa Claus Parade in Montreal. And the photographer didn't, couldn't get access to the, the mother and daughter. But it was such a beautiful shot that they put it on the newspaper anyway. The front page of them, beautiful shot of them looking up at Santa. Well, apparently she was hiding from a estranged husband and she had to quit her job and move to another part of Canada and sued the newspaper for $10 million or something like that. That's how you can legally film people on public property, but you have to remember that if they lose financially due to you publicly showing their image, it could cost you. So it's very important to sort of nail all those down, make sure that you have access along with your idea. Now there's about three different approaches to making a documentary. So after you've figured out your idea and the, the content that you're going to put in your documentary you have the right to access it and put it in your documentary. You got to kind of figure out your approach. Basically, there's three approaches. There's what I call the classical form of documentary or the journalistic model or the expository model. Um, it's the kind of like the Ken Burns approach where you have in the industry, we call it the voice of God, a narrator giving you information we don't know who that narrator is, but they're presenting it along with images to match that. And it's very simple. It's a very accessible. Uh, it's the easiest to produce because it's kind of straightforward. 
Um, and then there's another approach to making documentary, and it's called the experimental approach, which I call, or some people call it the poetic mode. And it's kind of, the narration th doesn't have to be strong. Um, it's a more expressive form of making a documentary. Um, and then there's the third approach, which I call the point of view. Some people call it the performative mode. It's kind of a personal approach to making documentary. People know Michael Moore's this type of approach where the filmmaker's point of view sort of pulls the narration along. It's a very personal approach. Um, and uh, it's actually the most popular. People like it because it has that personal approach. You have to understand that the art of making documentaries is not that old. We've only been kind of doing it for, you know, 50 years or so. So it's a new art form. When I first started, you had these three different approaches to documentary and you would never mix them. Now, as the evolution of documentary filmmaking has gone, we take various approaches from different uh, applications of documentary and sort of we can mix and match them. It seems to be kind of the newer way of doing things, but you can make up whatever way you want. Uh, so this has been the development or pre-production stage of the documentary workshop program for making a library documentary. I'm going to post the three different approaches at the end of this segment so that you can go on the National Film Board website and see examples of different approaches to get the best sort of feel of how you, you want to construct your documentary. Okay, looking forward to telling you about the next stage. Take care. Good luck.